Oh, hey there, YouTube. I'm back here today for another game review. Today, I'm very excited to check it out. Ice School Pyramid of Pink Queen. This is from Brain Games. Two to five players, ages eight plus. It'll take about 40 minutes to play. And in Pyramid of Pink Queen, this is a spinoff from the immensely popular Ice Cool. It's nothing at all like Ice Cool. In this game, one player is actually going to be playing as a mad pink queen who's going to be going around her home trying to catch treasure hunters the other players are going to be treasure hunters who are trying to get five different treasures this is a completely competitive game it does have a one versus all sort of vibe but the all are actually competing against each other as well it's a light simple very cool looking game but is the game itself very cool let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think all right, and then we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Pyramid of Penguin. So, first and foremost, we have a handy dandy rule book. It is four pages, double sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. Very well done. Should have you up and running in no time at all. And once you've used it once or twice, you'll probably never need it again. So, in Pyramid of the Penguin, you're either going to be playing as the dreaded Ping Queen, who is going to be on one side of this big structure right here, or you're going to be playing as one of the different colors. Blue, red, yellow, and green. Moving around this map right here, trying to collect five different goodies. If you can collect five different goodies, then you will win the game. If the Ping Queen catches any of these kids a certain number of times, then she will win the game. So what am I talking about? Let's go over the components. Let's get into the gameplay. So first, we do have this really cool box, and I just want to spotlight how it works. This thing actually gets put right down here in the middle, and it's a really nice system. It works really stinking well. So thumbs up on that. Just a really cool looking presence there. So, I've set up the game like so. We got the Ping Queen on this side, we would have the kids on the other side. And for this particular scenario, we're going to pretend that we are, in fact, playing a five player game with four explorers and the one Ping Queen. So, in a four player game, we have four treasure hunters. If the Ping Queen can get seven life tokens from the kids, then she will win the game. You get life tokens by catching the kids, by going to their spot. The kids are going to each get one of these colored cards. So they're going to get a yellow card, they're going to get a red card, a purple card, a green card, and a black card. And these are the five uh, five places they have to visit in order to win the game. The five jewels, gems, relics they have to get in order to win the game. And every one, every one of the treasure hunters is going to have their own specific five cards. This is not a cooperative game. Everybody on the other side of this board is working competitively to try to get their five things. Um, so if blue, for instance, gets all five of their cards, blue is the only person that wins. So not cooperative at all. I want to... I want to make sure that that is abundantly clear. So next we're going to have these really nice dice over here, these custom dice. This will be the penguin die, uh, the penguin die, uh, that's such a dumb name, is going to be on this side right over here. And then the other dice are going to go to the hunters. And we'll start off with the first hunter. And so the first hunter is going to, for some reason, roll their dice over here. Because normally uh, the penguin is on this side, the hunters are on that side, and they don't see each other's side of the board. But what's cool is, and let's see if I can do it, pay attention to that one right there what will happen is they will see what he's doing based on how he moves and when he catches somebody it will make this sound boom he'll snap them up like so uh, but we'll show you that a little bit later so let's get back down to how the game works so they're going to roll the dice and they're going to make sure that the ping queen can see the dice and every time they get this symbol right here they're actually going to hand that dice to the ping queen so now we have a 3-3-1-4. Three, three, this is going to dictate your movement. So you're going to pick one of your dice, and only one of your dice, and that's how many spaces you're going to move. Uh, so this means you're going to move three spaces, one space, four space. This means you get to move in a straight line any direction until you hit the wall. And if you're not happy with any of your rolls, so let's just say that we roll the 1, 2, 2, uh, 1, then you can roll again. You can roll as many times as you want, but... The thing that you should be concerned about is if you get other more penguin symbols, then you have to give them to the ping queen. So let's say we're going to take this four right here, and yellow is just going to go one, two, three, four. Boom. At this point, if they happen to have that card, so let's just say that yellow actually was going for that, they'd say, ha ha, I have reached my goal. And they would show their goal card 
to the Ping Queen and say, I am right here, right now. And you have to stop and end your turn on that. That's great for Yellow because they are one step closer to winning the game, but now the Ping Queen has very valuable information. They, she knows exactly where someone is. So now we'll go to the next player. Let's pretend it is the Red Penguin, the Red Treasure Hunter. So the Red Treasure Hunter has a choice. They can get back these two dice, but if she decides to get back these two white dice, then the Ping Queen immediately would get to move two spaces. So for this particular instance, she'll say, yeah, I want those two dice back, and the Ping Queen gets to go one, two, and obviously he's going to head over in this direction because he knows yellow is there. So red's now going to roll the dice, and red got, oh, a beautiful roll for the Ping Queen. So red's in the not a very good spot because red... Wants to, wants to get moving, but at the same time, red does not want to be anywhere near yellow and really doesn't have a choice. So red, you know what? Red's just going to go right here. They're going to do that. And then blue's going to go, and blue's going to be like, you know what? You can just keep those dice, dog. He's going to get a four, and he's going to go one, two, three, four. I want to get away from all the shenanigans over here. Green would go, and Green's like, sure, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll let you have those dice, because you normally want to take those, and I'll, I'll explain why in a second. So Green's just going to go one, two, three. They're going to go there, because Green doesn't know what they're doing. They're like four. So now it gets around to the Pink Queen. So we're going to flip it over to the other side. Pink Queen has no idea what anyone else is doing on these sides. All they know is that, in fact... Oh, wait, no. One, two. Yeah, one, two. She was right there. Someone is right here. So, how many spaces does the penguin get to move? One, two, because they have the two dice, and whatever they roll. So right now, they would get to move four spaces. So he'd go one, two, three, and he, he's going to be kind of tricky. He's going to think somebody's here. Four, and just like that, there was a little click. He caught somebody. So he caught the person that was trying to escape, trying to go to the top. So, because he got super lucky... He is going to get one of the blue torches. So the blue person's going to give them one of the torches, and the blue player has to go all the way back to the starting spot, which kind of stinks. Now, the other thing is, uh, if the Pink Queen did have more movement, they don't get to use it. As soon as you catch somebody, your turn is over, because that's a spectacular turn as is. So now it would go back to the yellow player, and the yellow player is going to roll these three dice, unless, of course, they want to get these dice back. So the more dice that the Pink Queen has in front of them, the more they get to move when it's their turn, but taking them back is going to allow them to move when it's not their turn, so it's a double-edged sword. Anywho, you're going to continue to go until the Pink Queen has got uh, X number of the tokens based on the player count you're playing with, or until one of the explorers has gotten all five of their cards, at which point that player will be the winner of the game. And that, in a nutshell, is how you're going to play Ice Cool Pyramid of Pink Queen. Alrighty then, Ice Cool Pyramid of Ping Queen for Brain Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. It's a very light, simple game, and I am personally going to use this only as a family game. Maybe as a gateway game, I think, I think you could use it there. But for me and my style and the people I play with, I would never use this as a game night game. Now, that being said, I think if you do play games on the lighter side, like if you're still in the uh, pandemic, Ticket to Ride, King of Tokyo-esque range, where those are the kind of games that you tend to gravitate towards, I think this one could go over well as a game night style game for you. But for me, and, and if you're into more of the heavier stuff, I don't think this is going to be one that goes over too well for you. I think people will have fun, but they'll be like, yeah, let's, let's play something with more substance. Because... Moving on to another con, this can be a very repetitive game. Uh, if you're the Pink Queen, all you're going to do every single turn is roll the dice and move. 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 Now, you do get to move from time to time based, you know, on other people's turns, based on if people take their dice back. But if you're playing as a treasure hunter, once again, the only thing you're going to do is take back your dice, potentially, and then roll the dice and then move. And roll the dice and move and try and get your treasure. And that's all you're doing. Uh, there's not many choices to be made in the game, and a lot of the choices are pretty obvious choices. For instance, if you're the Pink Queen and you know where someone is, you're probably going to try to head towards that person. Another comment I have with this game is that I like to best at the higher player counts. So that being said, I still had fun at the lower player counts, but I really liked it when it was uh, the full complement of players. I felt like it made it slightly easier for the Pink Queen as well. I feel like the treasure hunters at the lower player counts have a slight advantage because the board is so big, but I don't have any evidence to back that up. It just 
felt like that. Now, that being said, I've played it seven or eight times now. The kids from my class really went nuts for it, but still, I don't have any empirical evidence to say, oh, it's four players, and it's clearly imbalanced. The Penguin has an advantage or something like that. No. Any other cons that I have for the game? No. As long as you go into it knowing that it's light and simple and it's probably only going to work in certain circumstances, primarily family weight gaming, if, you, if you're into heavier games, uh, Pyramid of the Pink Queen is a great family game. Just no bones about it. This is a great family game. This is the kind of game that's going to be on my shelf for as long as I have a shelf. I brought it into my classroom. Kids went nuts for the game. They just went crazy for the game. I, I had kids playing it, and I had kids watching, and then those kids watching immediately wanted to play it. And the rules are so light and so simple that this is almost a family weight game. Or not, not a family weight game. This is almost a children's game. Like, I feel like this is the kind of game where after playing it a couple times or watching it being played a couple times, a six, seven, eight-year-old could play these this game by themselves uh, without any adult help whatsoever because there's no reading, there's no iconography, there's none of that. It's just roll the dice and move, which is great if you're looking at this as a family game. Uh, I play this with my family, my five-year-old and my wife. They really stink and enjoy this game. I played it with tons of kids, probably 10 to 15 kids. They all enjoyed the game. I did play it with a couple of adults. They had fun with it, but it was the kind of thing, as I mentioned, they're like, that was cute. That's a fun little game. Uh, not something I'd really want to revisit uh, with adults. But still, they had an enjoyable time with the game. Like the artwork, well done rules, great components. Uh, the box, I mean, it has great table appeal. You're going to set it up and people are going to be like, what is that? That looks really cool. And they're going to be looking at all the different things and seeing how the magnet works. They'll be like, oh, that's neat. And in the end, Pyramid of Pink Queen is great. If you're looking at this as a family game, I wholeheartedly recommend this game. Now, if you're looking at this as a game night style game, because you are on the lighter side of games, nothing wrong with that, obviously, I would do it as a try before you buy sort of thing, though, because I feel like it is so repetitive, and it is, uh, none of, no game of this is going to feel terribly different from any other game is what I'm trying to say here. It's not the kind of game where it's like, oh man, you remember that one time that crazy thing happened in the game? It's like, no, it's, it's not going to happen. Also, if someone has a big lead, it's nearly impossible to catch up to them. And that, that's another con that I do have with this game. It does have somewhat of a snowball effect where if one hunter has four colors and another hunter has uh, you know two or three colors, it's going to be really, really stinking difficult to catch up. Because the thing is, the one hunter is going to be like, you know what? I don't even care if I'm having to reroll the dice. I'm going to get that four. And yeah. So there's that aspect of the game. Catch up mechanism wise. There's not a really good catch up mechanism in this game. I don't think. Uh, but yeah, that's Pyramid of Ping Queen. I think it's a great family game. No bones about it. Whole, wholeheartedly recommend this one as a family weight game for kids age 5 to 16. I think they're still going to have fun with the game. I think, though, as you get up towards that 16, it's going to be less fun. Unless, of course, you are on the lighter side of the hobby. So, there you go. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know. If you could eat one animal out of the ocean, what animal would you eat? I mean, personally, I would eat, I want to eat that fish that has the light above its head that, that tries to attract the other little fish by doing the light. And I want to eat the light. I want to see what the light tastes like, as odd as that is. Let me know in the comments below. What, what animal would you like to eat out of the sea? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.